Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson we will talk about types of materials and their properties and why we choose them to build certain objects. So the first material we will talk about is wood, or I should say our wood and modified wood. So there are two types of wood. There's hardwood that comes from leafy trees, oak would be an example of that, and softwood that comes from uh, fir trees, coniferous trees, so pine would be an example. So why would we choose wood as a construction material? Well, its properties are hardness, elasticity, resilience, toughness. It doesn't conduct electricity or heat, or not very well anyways, if it does. Um, we can shape it very easily and we can assemble various pieces of wood together very uh, easily. So it makes it a great uh, construction material for homes, for furniture and whatnot. It comes in various colors and shades, so we can also use it uh, in a very aesthetic way. And it's a light material, it's not heavy. Now, if we look at various types of modified woods, we know plywood, particle board, and fiber board. Those are the main ones that we come across. So they are very similar. Uh, in a sense that they are made of wood and other products that are mixed in together, such as glue as an example. Now, if you start with a very fine type of wood, you'd have fiberboard. If you have slightly bigger pieces, you can make particle board. And if you have sheets of wood, uh, you have plywood. Okay, so depending on the, the size of the, the, I'll call them the particles of wood that compose the modified wood will have either plywood, particle board, or fiber board. Big pieces in plywood, medium pieces in particle board, and very fine dust in fiber board. And we use a mixture uh, of wood and other, other substances, chemical substances, to increase its strength and durability as well. Next we have ceramics. We know that we use ceramics in construction very often, but it has other uses. So how is it made? So we take uh, inorganic raw materials okay, that contain oxides. We know that oxides come from oxygen. So clay, the things that come from the ground, right? Clay, earthen elements, um, and we mix that with powders and water. And then we heat it. And when we heat it, well, the water in the organic matter evaporates and that kind of reshapes the bond. So there's a chemical reaction that occurs and then the bonds between the compounds rearrange and we have a new material that we call ceramics. So we start with clay and we mix that with other stuff, we heat it up and we uh, create ceramic out of that. So we know that we use ceramic to make brick, mortar, cement, glass, and as you can see here, various other uh, items. We often find ceramics in homes in a form of uh, dishes, for example, or tiles. Um, but as I said, it can use, be used in many different ways. So what are its properties? It has very low electrical conductivity. So because of that, we'll tend to use it as an insulator. So sometimes you'll have that in uh, electrical components. You'll have ceramics because it's a good insulator. Uh, it has a high degree of hardness. We know that tiles are very hard. They cannot get dented very easily. Uh, so we know that they're used as building materials. We see them uh, very often in homes and various buildings. They have high heat resistance and low thermal conductivity and they resist erosion. Next we have metals and alloys. So metals are extracted from the ground, so they're extracted from what we call an ore. So if we have a lot of metals in the ground, it's called a deposit. Once we take it out of the ground, we call that an ore. So they're usually shiny. They're good thermal and electrical conductors, so that's very useful. They're highly ducti ductile, sorry, so we can stretch them to make wires, and they're malleable, so we can bend them without breaking them. So we can shape them very easily. The most common ones are iron and aluminum. Now we also create alloys, which are mixtures of metals. We want to create basically a mixture that's even better than the original component. So by taking various metals or substances that have great properties, well, we make a super substance. So the mixtures can be made of metals and non-metals, not 
solely metals. The most common ones are ferrous alloys. So ferrous comes from fer, which is iron in English. So these compounds, these alloys, uh, are composed of iron and other materials. The others are called non-ferrous. In other words, they do not contain iron. Now, what is an alloy? You may not have an idea in mind, so I've put here various examples that are fairly common. So cast iron is one of them. So cast iron is made of iron and carbon. Sometimes we'll find silicon in the mixture as well. Um, another one that you may be familiar will, with is stainless steel, which is iron, chromium, carbon, molybdenum, and sometimes there's other uh, items that are included in the mixture. White gold is actually gold, palladium, nickel, and zinc. So it's not pure gold. Okay, so these are just a few examples, but there are many, many more. Plastics, very common material that we encounter in our everyday lives. So they're, main, uh, they're made uh, mainly from fossil fuels. So the main ingredient in a plastic is a fossil fuel. So petroleum and natural gas are uh, the main substances that we use. Uh, they're good insulators of heat and electricity. We know they can be very strong, as strong as metals, depending on the type of plastic. They are materials that are composed of uh, repeating monomers. So think of Legos. So a monomer is like a little unit. And when you put all various monomers uh, together, then you make a polymer. So poly means several. So polymer is a bunch of monomers that are put back to back, basically, to make a long chain. So an example is PVC. PVC, uh, if you look under a sink, uh, you have pipes, right? So those pipes are made of plastic, they're made of PVC. So that's an example of a plastic that's made of a, a polymer, polyvinyl chloride to be exact. There are two main categories of plastics, thermal setting, so it says it, it's set. So it remains permanently hard when subjected to heat. So once you've molded your piece of plastic, you can't undo, uh, you can't change that shape. Thermoplastic, on the other hand, can be remolded when heated. So it can be kind of melted, warmed up, and remolded. And that is why some plastics do not go in the microwave. If you put them in the microwave, they start melting because they're made of thermal plastic. They're not made to be heated up because otherwise they change their, they lose their shape. Okay, so if you look at the structure of a thermoplastic, which can be remolded versus thermal setting, you can see this one is more complex and because of it, it that's why it's set. It cannot be uh, changed, its shape cannot be changed even if you heat it up. Examples of thermoplastics, so water bottles and plastic bags and uh, other plastic containers would be examples. Now, for um, uh, thermoplastics, you have other examples here. Uh, you can take a look. So um, you have lunch boxes, uh, bowls, buckets. So I, I would say more or less items that we encounter in our everyday lives, smaller objects, more or less. Um, at the bottom you see pipes covering for electric cables and whatnot, floor wall coverings. So you've got a whole list there. So those can be recycled because they can be suggested to heat, subjected, sorry, to heat, and they can be reshaped. Now, on the other hand, the th thermal setting plastics, as I said, they're set, so they cannot be modified. So they can't be recycled because of that. So examples, fiberglass, polyester resin, polyurethane, melamine, uh, epoxy, you might have come across those words before. Uh, examples of uses, circuit boards, um, laminates, so kitchen cabinets, for example. Um, you could have electrical fittings, like sockets, switches, plugs, and whatnot. So s some of the, the those plastic elements are set. They cannot be melted and reused and reshaped. Composites. So a composite is formed by the combination of two materials. Um, and what we do again is a little bit like for alloys, we want to have the best of both worlds. So we want to put materials together that are going to make a super material. Okay, so there are two components, a matrix, which is like the skeleton and the shape of the, the substance, and the reinforcement, which strengthens the matrix. Okay, so this is 
the base, this is the, the reinforcement makes it even better. So it enhances the properties of the substance, um, of the original substance by adding a second one. An example, cement reinforced with metal rods. So when we build uh, bridges and roads and whatnot, often we're just, just not going to pour concrete. We're going to put metal rods because this reinforces the cement. It makes it stronger and more durable. Another example of composite, carbon fiber. So more and more we see bikes that are very light because of the carbon, but they're also very strong because of other components in there. Um, so this is a reinforced polymer. We also use uh, carbon fiber in airplane wings, for example, automobile body parts, because we're trying to make cars lighter. They don't consume as much fuel um, and they're not uh, as detrimental to the roads and sports equipment, obviously, as we have an example here. Fiberglass is another example. So we see that in homes, uh, sometimes uh, a bathtub would be an example. Um, so it's a plastic that's combined with glass. So that's why we call it fiberglass. Glass fibers mix with plastic. Uh, if you own, not if you own, but if you've used a canoe or a, um, a kayak, for example, so, so boats uh, often use fiberglass as well as a, uh, as a building material. So this was the last example of composites, um, and that was the last material we were going to look at. Now, in the next lesson, we will look at treatments, because some of these materials may decay, so we need to treat them to protect them. Um, so that's going to be the next lesson. But in the meantime, if you have questions, you know what to do. And otherwise, I will see you for your next lesson. And until then, take care.